Hello everyone and welcome to a game. Uh, this is a demo of Errant Heart made by a company called Sudome. Um, I don't really know anything about this game but I saw some tweets on my Twitter feed and I, it looked pretty cool. Um, like the artwork and stuff. So I'm like yeah, let's just jump right in shall we? And the background is kind of boring but it is, I believe it is in a, a Kickstarter right now. Um, I don't know how long the Kickstarter is going on for but I'll be sure to have that information in the description as I do some research on it. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Ooh, ancient Egypt. Oh, my heart of my being, do not rise up against me as witness. Do not oppose me in the tribunal. Do not rebel against me before the guardian of the scales. You are my ka within my body. The gnu... Kun, uh, Noom who prospers my limbs, the judgment of the dead, the papyrus of Ani. How do I say that? Kanum? Noom? I guess the H is probably silent. Alrighty! Ancient Egypt, interesting. The Giza Plateau, January 26th. What year? I don't know. Scribbling dutifully in his journal, a rotund man suddenly stops and takes it. Hang on. I got it. That audio is really loud. It has controller support, which is awesome. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Now I gotta figure out how to get back there. Okay, save return. Okay, takes a sip of tea. Having paused momentarily, he glances outside of the tent and calls out to a much younger fellow walking past. Nigel! Oh, it's got voice acting. Awesome! Yes, Doctor? Do you know the whereabouts of Cassandra? I do not. The young man hesitates. He reluctantly responds. She said that she wanted more time to work on transcribing a steely that she found at the edge of the site. God, that sounds like my friend Aaron. The doctor bolts upright, with journal in hand. He wears a scowl on his face and slams the book down on the table as he responds. Blast it, man! You know how dangerous it is after dark. If we're to stand any chance of keeping bandits at bay, we all need to be back at camp by dusk. It's pretty good voice work. As the doctor continues to lecture the young man on protocol, his raised voice attracts the attention of the rest of the camp. Other expedition members stop what they're doing and glance over to the doctor's tent. While they may only be able to make out a few choice words from the doctor every now and again, his body language fills in the gaps quite obviously. That blasted woman! She seems to believe she can do whatever she likes, simply because of a few lucky finds. Well, she did discover that pharaoh. That's pretty important, man. A young girl, presumably a local, sticks her head out of the tents nearby. She seems curiously drawn towards the bellowing of the fat European man. The doctor points his pen at the young man and continues. Do you have any idea how tenuous our situation is here? Our sponsor may have money to burn, but if we make a single misstep, the provisional government will shut us down. All we need is the death of one stupid woman and our work will be for naught. About to continue pressing his point to the hopeless young man, the doctor notices the young girl cautiously sulks, oh sorry, skulking around the edges of the tent. Ah, you there. The girl jumps as the doctor turns his attention to her. You're always helping Cassandra. Where is that woman? Apparently unable to understand the language, the girl shrinks from the doctor and shakes her head. Well, speak up then. Where is she? Perhaps feeling sorry for the girl, the young man intercedes. Sir, she returned with the rest of us. Cassandra must have sent her back alone. Still staring at the young girl, his, the doctor does the be uh, I can't read today. The doctor does his best to stifle his displeasure. 
but the redness of his chubby face betrays his true feelings. I see. Turning abruptly from the girl, the doctor rips a piece of paper from one of the notebooks. Still standing, he hunches over the table and hurriedly scribbles something on the sheet. Once done, he folds the paper a number of times and then approaches the girl. The doctor stretches out his right hand and presents the paper to the girl. Well, go on then. Unsure of what he wants, the girl just clasps her hands to her chest and backs away a couple of steps, obviously threatened. Oh, bloody hell. The doctor steps forward and grabs the girl by the arm. He shoves the paper into her hand and speaks in a supremely condescending tone. Take this to Cassandra. Understand? Cassandra, go find her and bring her back, yes? With some inkling of what the loud fat man wants, the girl turns around and takes a few tentative steps into the desert before pausing. Apparently not satisfied with this response, the doctor lifts his right leg and places his boot on the girl's backside. He pushes the girl with his little effort as if he were pushing over a piece of cardboard. The girl flops down face first onto the rock-strewn desert ground. She coughs a few times as some fine-grained sands reaches her lungs. Hurry now, child. This guy, man, he's got problems. He's very short-tempered. With that, the young girl looks behind her. She quickly scrambles to her feet and runs off into the desert toward a rock outcropping about a kilometer away. Concerned, the young man questions the professor's behavior. Is that all right, doctor? It's all left. The doctor walks back to his table. He seats himself and takes a sip of tea before responding. Presumably, the girl is the only one who knows where Cassandra was last. And she knows the desert better than any of us. After taking out yet another sip of tea, the doctor resumes writing in his journal and finishes his thought. Should anything happen to her, it will be substantially easier to convince the provisional government to let us remain. She's just a local after all. They're caught up in bandit raids all the time. Hmm. He must be f feeling pretty good in here considering how cold he is. A woman dressed in khakis is sitting just inside of a ruined shaped oh sorry, ruined stone ruined shaped ruined stone doorway. She's grasping a small tablet in one hand and has her other hand on a journal on the ground. She occasionally glances between the two. Upon switching her view back to the tablet, she notices something in the distance. The woman stands up and squints for a moment before she calls out. Salima! Over here! Salima! Stopping for a moment, the cloaked figure in the distance looks around to try and pinpoint the source of the call. The woman waves her arms and calls out again in an attempt to get the attention of the person. Salima! Over here! With that, the person starts heading over to the woman. Satisfied that she caught the attention of the cloaked figure, when the woman turns around and places the tablet in her hand into a leather satchel. She picks up her book and a few other miscellaneous tools and packs them away as well. The woman mutters under her breath. That fool, I told her to go back with the others. Out of breath, the person of the distance finally arrives and stops about a meter from the woman. The archaeologist turns around in admonishment. Damn it, Salima! I told you to go back with the others. It's too dangerous out here by yourself. The figure pulls back her hood. Still breathing heavily, the girl simply smiles at the woman and holds out a piece of paper. The woman shoots the girl a glance of displeasure and proceeds to take the paper from her hand. She unfolds it and reads it aloud. Cassandra, return to base camp immediately lest you complicate matters beyond my ability to mitigate them. The woman remains silent for a moment and then begins laughing quite vigorously. Ha ha! Salima sits down on a nearby stone outcropping and looks quizzically at the woman. Uh, Dr. Langham, more concerned with keeping the dig going if I die rather than my actual safety, eh? Mm, well, judging from the very few minutes I've had with the good doctor, that doesn't surprise me. Cassandra lowers the paper and looks at Salima. She mutters to herself. Not that your note was actually important. You knew I'd have no choice but to return if you sent Salima to me this late in the day. Bastard. Hey, don't name calling here. 
Cassandra stops as she notices Selima fumbling with something on her left side, although it's obscured by her cloak. Hmm? What's wrong, Selima? What, what's wrong? Not bothering to respond until she hears her name uttered, Selima pulls back, apparently not wanting to let Cassandra see. What is she hiding? Hey, you better not be pilfering my dig site again, you little... Cassandra stops short as she grabs Selima's left arm and lifts it up. With nothing in the girl's hand, she notices a rather sizable gash on her left forearm. Feeling bad about having admonished the girl improperly, Cassandra's tone immediately turns compassionate. Oh, I... I'm sorry. With that, Cassandra turns and begins rummaging around her satchel. She removes a rag and a canteen. Here, gimme. Gimme, gimme. Holding out a hand, Cassandra waits for the young girl to respond. After a moment, she rolls up her sleeve and tentatively gives her left arm over to her makeshift nurse. Cassandra unscrews the top from her canteen and then proceeds to twist Salima's arm in such a way that she can move more e or sorry, more easily see the gash. She slowly pours water along the length of the cut. The wash reveals that the wound is a lot smaller than she first thought, which is good. At this, she smiles and proceeds to pat down the wound. Well, that wasn't all that bad. You need to be more careful, or else your uncle won't let you keep working the dig with me. Cassandra takes another rag out of her satchel and begins wrapping it around the young girl's arm. It's funny. If I didn't know better, I'd think you purposely don't speak English around us because you're afraid you'll sound silly. At this, the young girl averts her gaze. Cassandra finishes the dressing and continues. Well, you shouldn't be. You're picking it up surprisingly quickly. Before you know it, you... Surprised by the odd light that suddenly bathed the land, Cassandra stands up and says with alarm in her voice, What? Still staring off into the distance, dumbfounded, Cassandra staggers forward after a few seconds. She whirls around and asks in a raised voice, Salima, what's the meaning of this? Her eyes wide with fear, the girl just manages to shake her head in the negative a few times. Concerned with the girl's unexpected response, Cassandra approaches Salima and grabs her by the shoulders. Salima, are you doing this? Apparently shaken out of her revere by Cassandra's touch, Salima looks her in the eye and manages a simple response. Not me. Cassandra releases the girl and furrows her brow. After a few moments of thought, she proclaims. We've got to get out of here. We'll head back to camp. Cassandra leaves her equipment behind and begins walking away from the dig site. She instinctively looks back after a second and notices Salima still sitting where she left her. Salima, come on! We have to go back! Not moving at first, the girl slowly gets up from her seat. She stands but continues to hesitate. I know you're scared, but we have to find out who's doing this. Lowering the intensity of her voice, Cassandra continues. Don't worry. I may not know exactly what's happening, but I'll make sure you stay safe. With that, Cassandra rests her right hand on her hip, carrying a leather holster. The girl darts her eyes around a few times before fixing her gaze on Cassandra. She then trots forward, oh, sorry, toward her. On Salima's arrival, Cassandra places her arm around the girl's shoulder and jogs off with her into the desert. After a few hundred meters of jogging, the two stop to a beat-up motorized wagon. Cassandra gets in the driver's side whilst the girl runs around to the passenger side. Before doing anything, Cassandra waits for Salima to hop in. She watches as the girl places her hands on the dashboard. Do you think you can unstick it? The girl, with her eyes already closed, doesn't respond to Cassandra's question. Instead, she furrows her brow and seems to be concentrating very intently. After about 30 seconds, the girl lets out a sigh. She opens her eyes and looks to Cassandra. She shakes her head a few times. Damn. The woman hops out of the wagon and motions to Salima. Come on then, we'll just have to jog back. With that, the two abandon their motor wagon and start heading back to camp. Realizing that Salima is much smaller, Cassandra does her best to refrain from running too fast. 
but unexpectedly, at least twice, she finds herself about 15 meters in front of the girl. Each time she does, however, she stops and motions Salima to hurry up. Once caught up, they take off for camp again. Nearing the edge of the camp, Cass Cassandra pauses. She silently motions Salima to change directions and head over to the storage area. The various crates and barrels will give them good cover while she surveys the area. Salima scambers ahead of Cassandra. The girl hunkers down behind a large crate, but Cassandra slows as she notices a few of the expedition members not far away. They appear frozen in place, along with their ether doppelgangers nearby. Just as she expected they would be, but something's not quite right. Cassandra pauses and lets out a low, breathing ex breath sorry, breathy exclamation as she focuses her eyes on the frozen people. Oh God! Two men and one of the local women, and they look as though they were walking together when all three were struck by something. The men appear to have their abdomen sliced open, allowing their guts to slide out, but being frozen like this, their internal organs have yet to hit the ground. And the expressions on their faces look completely out of place as if they have no idea that their lives have just ended, as if they're ready to continue their conversation. The woman has her head tilted backwards. A large gash cuts across her throat. A bloody, frozen flap of skin dangles beneath her jaw. Frozen with astonishment, Cassandra suddenly snaps back to reality as she hears a sound from nearby. It's a low bass sound, a thud of sorts. This prompts her to gingerly make her way over to the storage area and get behind cover before survey surveying any more of the scene. Still intently scanning the area where the noise came from, Cassandra whispers to the girl. Someone like you must be here. Do you have any idea who it might be? After not receiving a reply for a few seconds, Cassandra reluctantly turns her gaze away from the source of the thud and towards Salima, whose gaze is also fixated on a distant object. Tracing her line of sight, Cassandra notices that Salima must be looking at another person frozen at the moment of death. Knowing that there isn't time to fall prey to emotion, Cassandra grabs Salima by the shoulder and says in a gruff whisper, Salima, do you know who's doing this? Pulling her gaze away from the surreal figures of death, the girl looks down at the ground and shakes her head. There are others, but these, they wouldn't do. Hmm. Having a general idea of what Salima is capable of, Cassandra decides against a direct confrontation. She has no way of knowing this person, what this person can do or what they want, other than the death of her entire expedition. Resting her hands on her hips as she thinks, she feels the pliable leather of her holster wrapped around her webly. Jolted out of her thought by another low bass thud, Cassandra snaps her head towards the source of the sound. It looks to have come from one of the assistance tents, probably no more than 10 meters away. Opening up her holster, Cassandra unsheathes her revolver, then scoots over a meter and places her left arm on top of a nearby crate. She rests the gun on the top of her left arm, closes an eye, cocks the hammer, and takes aim at the front of the tent where the noise came from. She silently curses the fact that she can't do more than this. As she waits, either to hear another noise or to see who emerges from the tent, Cassandra simply focuses on the tent entrance. She has to be quick. She has to make up her mind as soon as someone, something, emerges from the tent. Repeating, almost silently, she continues to focus on the tent. Come on, you bastard. Come on. Come on. Suddenly she stops as she detects some movement in her sights. What appears to be a piece of no, a blade emerges from behind the flaps of the tent. Though she has excellent eyesight, Cassandra can't quite tell. There seems to be something wrong with the blade. It has... it's discolored somehow. Blood? It's a reasonable assumption. That stills her will. As soon as she sees the head emerge from the tent, she'll take her shot. It's an agonizingly long wait for the person to emerge from behind the entrance. What's taking them so damn long? Just as her patience nears its limits, and as she feels the pistol grip getting slippery with sweat, Cassandra sees her opportunity and takes the shot. The instant the hammer falls, Cassandra realizes, much to her horror, that what she's shooting at is nothing more than a young girl. 
So you can almost see the path of the bull as it heads inexorably towards the unsuspecting girl. And without any remorse or regret, the bullet finds its target. As the slug tears to the girl's skull, she falls almost instantly. But even before her body falls limp on the ground, the eerie amber-red glow disappears. And while her opponent is most assuredly dead, Cassandra is assailed by the moans and screams of the dying from all around her. Ooh, I love this. It's a big mystery. What's going on? Duh, man, this is cool. I like this game. I like this game. I'm. This is awesome. Is that it? Is that the demo? That is the demo. Wait, new game. Prologue. Okay, that's okay. That's the, that was the prologue. But you know what? That's gonna be the prologue. You know, that's that's gonna be the demo. That's gonna be the the, the quick look here. So if you want to see more. You can download the game in the link below. You can donate if you want. I mean, you don't have to donate. You can download it for free, but it's highly recommended you donate to support the developers and whatnot because, you know, they need your support. Because I'm really liking this. It's so cool. I, love, I like the setting, the whole ancient Egypt type deal, the whole like mysterious figures and dead bodies and... Oh, the voice acting was really good too. I really enjoyed this enjoyed this game and I'm definitely going to be looking forward to it when it releases, whenever that is. So that's it for this episode and in the quick look and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy everybody.